ultra wide. There is a saying about monitors, once you go ultra wide, you never go back. And I did not believe the hype, but oh boy, was I wrong. This here, guys, is a 34 inch ultra wide monitor from Cooler Master. Yeah, I'll let that sing for you. You heard it correctly. It's a monitor and from Cooler Master. And actually, not their first one. Hi guys, Vlad here and let's get straight to business. 34 inches of ultra wide glory, 3440 by 1440p resolution with 109 pixels per inch density. It's enough to see my ugly face crispy clear on it. And wait, wait, it's also a quantum dot display, meaning it has a wider color gamut. You know, you are able to see the colors that you would otherwise not see. It is nice and curvy, like all monitors should be, it's a 1500R radius curve and in practice this is perfect amount of curviness so your peripheral vision is covered for that better immersion. And guys, trust me, if you never used a curved monitor, it's hard for like maybe 2 or 3 hours and after that you are all used to it and it becomes natural. It is a VA panel with a quantum dot layer which gives it the ability to cover a wider color gamut. Out of the box it is covering 98% of the CIP3 gamut and it is actually very very well calibrated. If you are willing to spend some time and calibrate it even further it can give you almost 100% of the CIP3 coverage but why should you even care for this feature? Maybe you would not, but someone who is into gaming and creative work as well, like photo and video editing, anything that is required to be color accurate, but not on a professional level, this monitor is actually suitable for that kind of work. The refresh rate of this monitor is 144 Hz and you can also reduce it to 120, 100 or 60 Hz as well, I mean if you need or want to. The panel is natively 8-bit, but you can set it to output 10-bit color and like most monitors on the market, this is done with 8-bit plus FRC, the frame rate control. The response time is rated at 0.5 milliseconds MPRT or moving picture response rate. This is not the same as the traditional grey-to-grey -grey response time. If we translate this into a GTG response time, it's closer to 4 milliseconds. It also supports FreeSync Premium out of the box. It is not G-Sync certified, but it works fine with G-Sync enabled as well on Nvidia cards. Brightness is certified at some 400 nits and actually it's more in a 440 nits range. It's a bit brighter, but as it supports HDR400 mode, being that bright, it is also good looking even in SDR mode, but there is a slight issue here. Enabling FreeSync will reduce the brightness down to 250 to 60 nits range. Now this is not an issue if you are looking at this monitor at night, uh, but in the brighter environments it might look a bit dull, I mean the colors might look a bit washed. In SDR mode it is sitting at some 360 nits, it's pretty nice and colors are popping, so enabling FreeSync will kind of take this nice feeling from you. I did try it both with FreeSync and without it and I did not notice any tearing but I did test it with a GPU that is powerful enough to drive almost any game to 144 FPS so this was not an issue in my case. But what is an issue immediately if you just unbox it and power it on and start gaming is ghosting. It is noticeable simply because VA panels are prone to it, or in this case, because the overdrive setting is set to dynamic mode. This is not an ideal mode for preventing ghosting as it introduces a lot of it, but if you set it to normal or advanced mode, ghosting will be greatly reduced. I mean, it will be still a bit noticeable because it will never be as on an IPS display, that's a fact, but it will be unnoticeable at least. I am keeping it at normal mode, it's great compromise as Advance has slight pixel overshooting or inverse ghosting. In the settings there is also a motion clearness or backlight strobing effect that can further reduce ghosting, but while this is effective, this further reduces monitor brightness and I simply would not advise you to use it. The contrast ratio is advertised as 3000 to 1 and if and when calibrated properly, this ratio is actually more than advertised, being closer to more 
or to 4000 to 1. This is actually a good thing as this makes the picture much better. Basically, you get more shades in the darker areas and brighter area of the screen. On screen display is in the lack of a better word, lame. But in its defense, it has all the options that you would need. Navigation is done with the joystick behind the right side. Technically, this should be easy, but for me personally, it's a bit strange because I got used to having joystick here in the middle of the monitor or the buttons on the right side, but I guess it's a matter of getting used to it. You can change color space from sRGB, Adobe RGB, DCI-P3, even to BT2020 or also known as Rec2020. This is the HDR color space. There are also predefined presets for gaming, reading, RTS, FPS games and even a setting for Max, which will utilize that DCI-P3 color space more and actually this whole monitor is calibrated and oriented to this color space. Technically, this is a great thing for that productive side of things, but I personally have found that if left in auto mode, colors are somehow oversaturated and not natural. And the whole point of calibration is to make them as natural as possible. Somehow I have found that for my personal taste, Adobe RGB color space is the best. Auto for me is somehow a bit warmer. Now I can reduce the colors to be more cold, but instead Adobe RGB gives me the best ratio between gaming and productivity because colors look more natural and not somehow artificially saturated. HDR mode is good, but being HDR 400 certified, this is an entry level HDR mode and if you properly calibrate it, SDR mode will look extremely good thanks to bright enough screen. And for a monitor to be true HDR, it also has to support local dimming zones and this monitor does not support that option. But no worries, highlights will look super bright in any situation and blacks will be dark as the night. While we are on the subject at night, you may or may not notice backlight bleed. This is something that plagues some units, not everyone, and you may or may not have it. Mine has some in the bottom area, but this is not noticeable during working or gaming. I mean, it is only noticeable while a completely black picture is shown on the screen. Once again, this may or may not affect your unit and it is simply not a deal breaker at all. Some expensive IPS models have way worse backlight bleeding. In the beginning of the video, I told you that hype for ultra wide monitors is real. It is. I did not believe it at first, but now I see why it is like that. You see, you have the wider screen space, which can turn you into productivity monster. You are not losing anything on the vertical space. You are just gaining like a third more of a standard 27 inch. It's about this size here. And this makes multitasking a breeze. You can have three apps open side by side and work without any limitations. And it's also great for video editing, so being able to see the complete timeline much more closely makes what I do much more easier. So you can see that I can see a complete timeline of a video right on the screen. In terms of gaming, you just gain a larger field of view and it feels kind of more natural, but bear in mind that some games will have limitations, so they will be displayed in a standard 16 to 9 ratio. Overwatch, for example, so you don't have an edge over the other players. And yes, finally we get to talk about the stand. It's shaped as the Cooler Master logo and it has RGB underneath. The execution of this RGB option is so good. It does not have any RGBs on the back, that's just an LED strip I put, but it's all in the stand here. Do not worry, it's not blindingly bright, it's enough to give you ambient light and yet it allows brightness control and color mode changing via the Master Plus software. But there is one limitation, this stand uses micro USB for power, so it is not directly connected to the monitor, nor is there any option to disable it in the menu. Simply said, you must use software or don't connect it at all, but how could you, it's super cool, really, it is. The whole stand is easy to install on the monitor, just align the two notches on the monitor itself and click into place. Screw the base stand with a thumb screw and you're done. Here you can see that the monitor supports wall mounting with the standard Visa 100 mounting holes. But why would you mount it on an arm when the stand is so gorgeous? Okay, I get it, maybe you don't like the RGB. Maybe. I sure don't. Anyhow. 
The whole stand is cast aluminum and it's quite heavy and premium. It also comes with a cable clip on the back so you can hide the cables alongside it. You have basic movements left and right up and down of 80 mm of movement. I would have liked it if there was like 20 to 30 mm more. Tilting is about 15 degrees up and some 5 degrees down. Viewing angles are excellent, 178 degrees and it actually does not lose colors while you are watching it from the side, like a traditional VA panel would do, partially thanks to the quantum dot layer. On the back of the monitor there is a visible Cooler Master branding, no RGB lights and from the ports we see that it comes with a standard 3-prong power connector, meaning there is no power brick as the power supply is integrated in the monitor. Two HDMI 2.0 connectors, one display port 1.4a and USB Type-C as well with 65 watts of charging support. There is also a USB upstream port which uses a cable from your PC to the monitor but the actual USB ports are on the left side of the monitor for easy access of flash drives, dongles and such. And lastly we have a 3.5mm headphone out as well. There are also two speakers here, 5 watts each and these are ok, plenty of volume, sound is not distorted but do not expect miracles here from such tiny speakers. Let's say that these are ok, it's a good thing it has them because most of the monitors do not. Cool 3, arguably the best case of 2022, but why is that? What's up guys, Vlad here and welcome to my channel and let's get straight to the point. Why is this Lancool 3 here the best case of 2022? But in the end it all comes down to how much this monitor costs versus how much of the features it offers. And it costs around 570 US dollars and can be found for even less at occasional sales. But is this price justified? Are you getting enough features for your money? So let's see the pros and cons so we can have a clear picture. And that's a pro, clear picture. Pixel density is also a pro, it's like on a 1440p 27 inch monitor, so you are not losing any clarity, it's all crispy and it's all vibrant thanks to the quantum dot layer as well. Also this gives it a wider color gamut support which is not only great for gaming but for a semi-professional work covering 98% of DCI-P3 color gamut. It's also a 10-bit panel, you know technically, like all the monitors are, and it supports HDR as well. 5 pros for now. Brightness is more than advertised which is a plus, contrast ratio as well, it has a Type-C port which supports 65 watts of fast charging, there are also two USB ports on the side, it's 144Hz 1500R curved panel which is that good curve amount with FreeSync Premium support and it works with G-Sync on Nvidia cards as well, without any picture blinking or similar problems that some monitors do have while using G-Sync compatible mode. It's 34 inches, so it's not too wide, so you would need to turn your head left or right constantly. It's a perfect size if you ask me. The screen is not glossy, it's half matte, half glossy, so it won't reflect light from the room. Keyboards on the desk and such. There are no obnoxious logos in the front, there is a subtle Cooler Master logo and the bezels are pretty thin, they are around 7mm on the sides with a pretty slim chin as well. Also, you will get all the cables needed in the box, power with both Europe and UK plugs, display port, HDMI, Type-B to A and also micro USB cable for that base RGB power and control. For the cons, I would have to say that there are some as well. Oddly, in this price range, monitors come with two display ports, but since it has a Type-C port, let's not take that as a con, it's half a con point. On-screen menu feels kind of outdated, it's pretty basic although it has plenty of options but would have been nicer if it was a bit prettier and if it did not, I mean it did have the ability to be controlled through the software on the computer. And lastly there is no picture in picture mode or at least I did not see it. So 570 bucks then, still more than competition but with Type-C support and quantum dot display and pretty decent overdrive modes I think the price is okay both for gaming and more serious work as well. 
So this has been all for this time guys, ask me anything in the comments below, sub to the channel as it helps a lot, check my other videos as well, like and share the video and I'll see you in the next one because I'm off to play something on this beauty. See you.